Hi, uh, so my name is James O'Keefe. Welcome to another episode of the Massachusetts Pirate Party News. Um, I'm joined today by um, <clears throat> our U.S. Pirate Party representatives, Eli and Joe, as well as First Officer Steve. How are the three of you doing? Doing all right. Can't complain, though I've done a lot of walking today. Doing good. This is my first meeting in a while. I should have been here a while ago. Well, welcome to this this episode of Pilot News. Pirate News, <laughs> Eli. So um, today, uh, uh, Joe and I got together and uh, went door to door getting signatures for his campaign for state rep. But we'll talk about that later. Um, first up, uh, Steve, you have some stuff in the world of privacy. Yes, I do have some stuff in the world of privacy. Um, late, I guess this was a February event, but the Federal Trade Commission issued a $16.5 million judgment uh, against uh, antivirus maker Avast. So what Avast was doing was using a browser plugin to basically collect you know its subscribers internet activity so every web page they visited what kind of hardware they were using what kind of operating system they were using as well as their geolocation this is all getting sent to avast and avast is just storing it they don't have a data retention policy they're not doing anything to anonymize it now in addition avast also purchased or formed a subsidiary company called JumpShot. And JumpShot was basically to be a, an analytics firm. So you have the um, Avast, the antivirus company selling PII to JumpShot, its analytics subsidiary, and then, an, and then JumpShot repackaging it and selling it to third parties. Uh, so the with the FTC's judgment, uh, sixteen and a half million dollars, and they're going to have to, um, you know, delete this data that they've been collecting. Now, this has also gotten the FTC to, you know, start thinking about, um, you know, maybe thinking, you know, it's given them the inclination that maybe there are definition of PII and sensitive information is a little bit too narrow. And they're interested in expanding it to include uh, things like browsing history and location data. Because I mean, if you have someone's location data over time, you can, um, you know, you can build up a pretty good prof picture of where they work, where they live, what places are likely to likely to frequent. And you know, browsing history tells you a whole bunch of personal stuff about, uh, you know, about, you know, what someone is. And, you know, the one company in particular, um, they're sort of under scrutiny in the EU, but it's a company called LiveRamp, uh, formerly known as Axiom, uh, a, a large American data broker. broker. They have an, uh, a an ID called, they call it a ramp ID, they call it uh, an anonymous ID, but it's it's basically the equivalent, their equivalent of like a social security number in the United States. They use it to tie together information on, you know, people's, you know, anywhere from your name, your address, where you've lived, it basically all the stuff that they uh, collect about you. And you can also, these brokers will, you know, when you start doing ad targeting, you can say, well, I, I'm interested, I want to, um, target this ad towards people who've been in a specific restaurant over a specific period of time. Uh, you can do it based on like people who have gone online and look, you know, and looked for some sort of healthcare or researching a disease, whatever. Um, yeah. So now the, it looks like, you know, we, you know, the U.S. has historically not had very good privacy laws. In fact, we've had very little in the way of privacy laws, uh, especially compared to, you know, our counterparts in the European Union. But it might look like, you know, the ad brokers are going to get reined in a little bit in terms of what they're allowed to, um, what they're allowed to collect and what they're allowed to store. So that is that's my privacy update for the evening, Jamie. 
Uh, thanks, Steve. Um, one thing I'll point out for those of you who don't know, uh, before the Massachusetts legislature is the Location Shield Act, which is a bill that we supported. What it would do is it would prevent um, data bro. It, will, it would prevent data brokers from selling location data on people. So if your car or your or your mobile phone provider. Uh, they wouldn't be able to sell that data to data brokers. And as a result, we'd all be much better off. So that's something you should call your state legislator, both in the House or the Senate, um, and urge them to support that bill and get it out of the committee. Uh, other thoughts about this? I mean, it seems, it seems like a good step. I mean, yeah. securing our data is one of the primary things that has been the focus of the pirates for a long long time that's why we hold crypto parties that's why we do everything that we've been doing since day one and so we don't want privacy for our government and for our rule makers but we want privacy for the individuals and this is a pretty clear violation of that so you know i'm glad they're considering it yeah, I was especially, you know, happy to see them taking re-identification kind of seriously because, you know, if you have, say, time and location data and a couple of, you know, that en enough is, could give, is, is a good way to, you know, start cor making correlations. You know, we know a person's identity here and we see that this other identity this other identifier was in the same place at the same time using, you know, maybe the same device and the same, same operating system. Well, maybe now we can match those up with a certain degree of, you know, uh, confidence and years, even just like two decades ago, this would have been sort of the, um, you know, the, the realm of three letter federal agencies. But these days, you know, it's, it's kind of routine for, uh, data scientists to, you know, go in and um, do computations like this. So, um, cheers. <laughs> um, so, Joe, you had an update on um, a, a significant monetary proposal. So homeowners in central Massachusetts are actually facing a pretty serious issue. Um, and that's in regards to them having uh, their foundations literally failed them. And so um, the foundations in their house. Now I do work in the, that particular industry right now. And so I kind of have a good understanding as to what's going on. So, um, and we'll link the news article to this, um, of course, but essentially what happened to the, the Cliff Notes version is that they found a pyrite in concrete. Now, what pyrite does is it really just breaks down the bonding agent. Now, in certain sites where they make concrete, it's very naturally occurring in Massachusetts. Um, in the bedrock of Massachusetts. So when they were producing this concrete, they were essentially producing concrete with something that would make the life of the concrete not last nearly as long. The pyrite kind of eats away at the binding agents, which would be the, the cement, the lime, and that makes the, makes the concrete fail uh, much sooner than it would normally otherwise. Um, now, the reason why this is such a huge issue, though, is because when your foundation fails, uh, that's not something that's going to be covered by insurance. It's not something that's going to be um, that you're going to be able to get a bank loan for. So because the value of your entire house has just went belly up. Uh, to replace the foundation costs pretty much what the house costs because you have to basically jack up the house and rip, remove all the foundation or even like lift up the house and move it off site while they redo the foundation and then move it back. So you have a $300,000 house. It's going to cost you about $250,000 to fix that. So no bank is going to give you a loan for it. 
and so all of your hard-earned money will ride out the window. And so now the reason why I want to really bring this story is because what does the governor, Maura Healy, say that she's going to do? She is so jumping all over this issue that she's waiting to see some legislation come across her desk and then she'll consider it. Uh, so kind of like the foundations of some of these poor people's houses, I kind of think that the foundations of our our whole government system is kind of falling apart. And where does that lead us, Joe? Well, that leads us to needing new, fresh blood and real candidates that actually care about the people instead of just their corporate interests. And, you know, that's probably why I'm running. Um, and, Jamie, I have to say thank you today for helping me get my button gear. Um, Jamie came with me today to go and get signatures, and it was such a wonderful experience, not just in hanging out with Jamie, which is always fun, but... And seeing that some of the craziness of people in general, as they would just slam doors in our faces and be like, I'm on the left, even though we, we were also on the left. <laughs> and I just don't, I, sometimes I don't understand it, but you know, um, there were the amount of support we got today was really heartfelt and very, very touching as I got to meet with my neighbors and, um, so many good people. There's so many good people in this world that are worth fighting for. And it just reaffirms everything that I'm doing today is the right thing because these are people that are worth taking care of. So. Yeah. Was it yeah. Like, sorry, go Steve. I, I was going to say, and the, uh, the, the incumbent you're running against isn't, I, it sounds like, uh, she is not, um, she typically doesn't have challengers. Is that correct? So out of the last 15 elections, that office has only been challenged three times. Well, so in, you're... in the last 15 elections, it's always been whatever Democrat wanted to get it. They're mm -hmm. like, oh, well, we like this Democrat. You're taking this office. No one ever challenges it. The Republican Party doesn't even bother at this point. So, in fact, I had to remind people who I'm running against. <laughs> and they were like, who is that? I've never heard of them or met them. So, that's how little, the, or how much they think they have this in the bag. And that's just not really politics at this point. It's just like, oh, you go to this office and you do whatever. You know, kudo, kudo. I'm, uh, I'm really, really excited to see. I know you've been wanting to do this for a while, and I'm really excited that uh, you know to see you out there doing it. So, kudos. I appreciate that. I mean, I still have a long way to go. I still have many more signatures to get, but technically, I have one third of this. If every signature I got today was a valid one, then I'm already one third of the way done in a single day. So, Excellent. that tells me that if any of you are looking for office or looking to run, if I can do it and I have my, my own issues that poor Jamie's had to put up with and all these times and be like, no, Joe, it's okay. Let's just go. Um, there are a lot of offices that are even easier to get into than state rep. And so if you're looking to be a part of this and making your voice heard and making real changes, be the candidate whose changes you want to see. So uh, I definitely encourage all of us to put in our, our hat in the ring to fight. Yeah, I thought it was a good experience. I, mean, I, I don't know how many hours you, you, you were out after I left. Um, and I know we we're out at least three hours together. So that's six hours and then eight you know, 50 signatures in, in eight hours, it, it may not, it, it, it's completely doable. I mean, it's March 24th, candidates have until uh, April 30th to get their signatures to city or towns. Um, you know, it's just a matter of 
going out either like an hour every weeknight or uh, some hours on the weekend, just knock on your neighbor's doors. I mean, we, we met so many people that Joe knew um, and even the people who, you know, in his area who didn't know him were still willing to sign. I mean, not everybody. You're always going to get some folks who don't want to sign for whatever reason, and that's completely acceptable. Um, but you'll get a lot of people who are like, yeah, I'd like another choice or just, you know, are, are happy to do that as part of their, their civic duty. Um, and, and Joe, you know, you were great out there. I know you were working through kind of, um, your patter in terms of how you introduce yourself. Uh, I know it was, he, he Joe, just to be honest, he was, he, he he was the guy who got most of the signatures. I did not get that many signatures. And I have been doing this for years, but I could just point to Joe. Oh yeah, I'm getting signatures for that guy because he was on the other side of the street. And they were like, oh, okay. And and, and they considered that. Um, and you know, certainly it's easier for the candidate to do it, but it was helpful to be doing it together. Um, and there's a lot of doors, you know, where people aren't home or they just, you know, it's Sunday and they just don't want to deal with anyone, um, which is perfectly, perfectly uh, understandable. So it's still nice to go out there and, and meet folks. And I look forward to it next Saturday when we go out. Uh, one of the things I would have to say, too, is I, I walk these streets all the time. People see me. I wave at everybody. I've been waving at everybody for years. And when... When you're seen in the general public in your area, it becomes more about helping your neighbors. Like when we were first walking around, I'm like, you know who I am. You need help moving this tree that, that fell down on your property. Just come over and knock and I'm going to come over and help you. And it really becomes making sure that you're taking care of the people around you and doing your duty. So, you know, in a lot of ways, it just reminded me why I wanted to get into politics in the first place, which is to help people. And, you know, you got to really ask why, remember why it is that we're in doing politics and not losing sight of that. So. All politics is local after all. Thank you, Tip O'Neill. So with that, um, I want to, uh, <clears throat> I want to thank, um, Eli, Joe, and Steve for participating uh, in this Pirate News with me. Uh, if you would like to help out, either as a participant or, you know, it'd be really nice for other people to help produce this, uh, send us an email, info at masspirates.org. You can always find us at masspirates.org. Um, and you can join our mailing list. There'll be links in the description below for where you can find us on social media or how you can volunteer uh, or how you can join our mailing list. And if you're interested in being a candidate, you know, I will come to your house and I will help you go door to door to make sure you get on the ballot. We have trainings uh, as well for how to get on the ballot, how to choose whatever campaign you want to run, and uh, lots of other how-to videos in terms of running. So by all means, um, we'd love pirates to run. It's going to be a great year for candidates, and uh, if not us, who if not now when? So with that, again, uh, thanks for folks watching. Thanks for the three of you, and hope you have a uh, wonderful, wonderful week. Bye.